G'day everyone, my name is David Mine. Welcome to episode number five of First Time Reefer TV. Today, we're gonna to start the cycle in our aquarium, but before we get there, I've got a couple of things to add to the tank. Firstly, we've gotta look at adding a heat source or a heater to this tank to make sure that we can keep the temperature at around 24 degrees. Now, with so many different heaters on the market, it's best to do your research to find out which brand you think is gonna be suitable for your tank. Now, over the years of my freshwater aquarium keeping, I haven't used any other brand except for the Eheim Jager. Now, this is an extremely reliable heater for me over the years. I haven't had one fail, um, and I struggled to find one that was small enough to be able to fit into my tank that would heat the water appropriately, but I've gone with 150 watt. Um, it should fit on the di diagonal, but uh, we'll find out soon enough when I try and get it in there. Now the second thing we've got to add is some biomedia to the sump, just so that bacteria can colonize during the cycle. And uh, after doing a lot of research, I've just bit the bullet and gone with a block of the Marine Pure. Now this is the eight inch by eight inch by four inch thick block. They're not a cheap block by any means, but I think quality of the media will definitely pay for itself in the long run. Now you have 2,150 square meters of surface area for the bacteria to colonize on. It's a really, really porous media, so water flows through it very, very easily. But most importantly, it allows for that anoxic environment for your denitrifying bacteria to colonize in, so that it can uh, convert your nitrate into nitrogen gas, which then dissipates through your gas exchange. So, uh, this is going to go into the refugium area along the bottom there, so just the water trickles across the top of it instead of going through it. Now, uh, I know that this tank was set up as a bare bottom to begin with, but I popped in and saw my friends at Fish World Aquarium and Nature Aquarium, and they're both using sand in their tanks, and I, uh, as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have sand in the tank. So, the sand that I've decided to go with, which I saw on display at both stores, is the Red Sea Ocean White. Now, this is the uh, dry version of the sand. It also comes in a live version, um, but they didn't have stock when I went to grab it. Um, so, this is a really, really fine, fine white sand. I think the finest sand on the market. And it looks absolutely fantastic in the tank. Now, through reading a lot, of the stuff online. People have said that this sand's really gonna blow around a lot, but I wanna find out for myself whether it does because the actual look of the sand compared to a lot of the other ones that I've seen, it looks 10,000 times better. So we'll get this one to the tank. I'll show you what you need to do to get this in there and ready. Um, and hopefully it doesn't blow around in the tank, but we'll find out soon enough. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and assembled and added the Eheim heater to the sump and it fits just right. Now, uh, the great thing about the Eheim heaters is it's got a calibration point. So once it's running on this tank and I'm uh, able to get the temperature stable, I'll be able to check that against what my heater is set at. And if it's off, you just calibrate the heater to display what it is on the tank. And then you just adjust it a little bit further to make sure the water is at the right temperature. Now, in regards to the Marine Pure block, there's a lot of dusty fines that are inside the packaging, which you need to get rid of before you chuck the block into your tank. Now, to get rid of the dusty fines, I just got a bucket of RO water, unpackaged the uh, Marine Pure block, and just dunked the block into the RO water just to get a lot of the dust into the water and out of the block before I add it to my tank. Because the last thing you want is a lot of that dust actually just traveling into the tank. Now, uh, the sand was a big, big pain to get into the tank because obviously my tank was already full of water. So I washed the sand for a solid hour in a bucket with just water and my hands running around it to try and get as rid of much of that cloudiness as possible. Now, um, after an hour, I sort of said that was enough and I decided to get it into the tank anyway. So the only way I could think of getting it into the tank was actually just pouring it in slowly. Now, I thought that it wouldn't make the tank that cloudy, but as you can see in the video, it actually did make it quite cloudy. But the good thing about that is uh, the sand is in the tank, but it cleared up relatively quickly. So by the next day with the filter and everything running and a bit of filter wall inside the filter sock, um, a lot of the water had cleared up and it was pretty crystal clear. But uh, looking at the tank now, I'm extremely happy that I decided to go with the Red Sea sand. And not only that, I actually have sand instead of going with the bare bottom tank for my first reef tank. Now, before I started my cycle, 
I was uh, browsing on Marina Crane Fanatics Australia Facebook page and I came across an awesome deal for a Senai Reef Monitor. Now the Senai Reef Monitor allows you to monitor pH, temperature, ammonia levels, uh, your light levels because it's a light meter or par meter as well. Um, and it allows you to monitor the levels in your tank. It doesn't allow you to control anything, but it gives you those warning signs before something might actually happen. So I thought it'd be really interesting to add that into the cycle so I could watch the uh, ammonia uh, reduce over the time as the tank cycles. But we'll go into the Senai Reef Monitor in a little bit more detail in another video. Now, uh, to start my cycle, I've gone with a fishless cycle method using the one and only Dr. Tim's bacteria bottle. So for that style of cycle, you essentially just add the bacteria to the tank and then add the ammonium that uh, is uh, supplied by them as well to get your ammonia levels up to start the bacteria cycling in your tank. So essentially in this tank, I added an entire bottle and I think it was about 60 drops of the ammonia to get it up to a level uh, according to their bottle. And then I've gone away for two weeks and left it to cycle. So I've got back now and the ammonia levels are next to zero. So what I'm going to do next is water change the entire tank. So I get rid of all the water in the tank with all the nitrates and everything else that's in there. And then just reset it with fresh artificial salt water. I've decided to go with artificial salt water because Port Phillip Bay water ain't that great at the moment. So we're going to exchange all the water, refill it again, and then we'll see how this tank runs. So now that I've changed 100% of the water in the tank, and uh, the temperature's back up and everything's running fantastic. I'm gonna say the sand's not blowing around at all. So I'm really happy I decided to go with the sand. Um, I've got the pump still in about 60, 65% at the moment, I think. And uh, I'm having no issues at all. So uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of a cleanup crew just to keep uh, on top of the cleanliness of the tank before I decide to add any fish. So I've got a little trochus snail, a turbo snail, and a couple of really, really, awesome zombie snails so they're just going to dig around in the sand there and just keep stirring that over while the other guys eat all the algae so i've got a bit of livestock in the tank now which is really exciting but the next step is to look for some fish and just to monitor to make sure everything's going all right in the tank i'm going to keep an eye on the uh, senai reef monitor just to monitor my ammonia levels to make sure that nothing's uh going wrong and uh to make sure that the temperature and everything else is fine as well so now I'm looking for a pair of clowns to chuck in this tank and I'm trying to decide whether I just go with a basic pair of clowns to begin with or uh, I really really like the Picasso style of clowns um, but obviously they're a little bit more expensive and high end so I'm a little bit umming and ahhing I'm not sure yet but I'm going to decide and let you guys know as soon as uh, I've made my decision. Now before I go, I'm just going to leave you guys with a few shots of my tank with the snails running around and how the sand looks and the scape and everything else. But in the meantime, if you're liking the channel, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you've got some suggestions as to other fish I can get into this tank or what my first coral should be, leave a comment down in the comment section down below. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram as well at First Time Reefer. And until next time, guys, peace. Thank you.